You're listening to the Options Insider Radio Network, the home of the Options Podcast. For more quality options programs, visit theoptionsinsider.com or search for Options Insider Radio Network in your podcast provider of choice. Listeners can also access all of our programming through our mobile app available on the iTunes and Google Play stores. Select programs are also available via live stream at Mixler.com slash options dash insider. That's M-I-X-L-R dot com slash options dash insider. Don't forget to follow along with your favorite programs and submit your own questions for the hosts at Twitter.com slash options, StockTwits.com slash options, Facebook.com slash the options insider, or via questions at the options insider.com. You wanted it. You got it. A radio program that helps teach you options trading inside and out. Basic to complex. This is Options Boot Camp. Whether you want to learn how to protect your portfolio, generate income, or even become a master of volatility, your Options Boot Camp drill instructors, Mark Longo and Dan Passarelli, will break it all down for you. Options Boot Camp is brought to you by Tasty Trade. Ready to shred your paper trades? Then trade at Tasty Trade, the broker that gives you what you need to make your own way. Get smarter every day with options education and research tools. Analyze your risks clearly with a potential profit and loss graph. Chart your way with hundreds of indicators. Make the numbers make sense and find the opportunities only you can see. Trade it with fewer clicks on an easy-to-use platform. Mobile, desktop, web. Supported by a trade desk with decades of combined experience. Stocks, options, futures, and more. You choose, you trade. Get what you need to make smart moves. Go to tastytrade.com slash pod to see for yourself, genius. Tasty Trade Incorporated is a registered broker-dealer and member of FINRA, NFA, and SIPC. Fall in boot. It's time to get into peak options trading shape. It's time for Options Boot Camp. All right, everybody. That music means but one thing. It is Wednesday. It is Education Wednesday. That means it is time once again on the network to roll out one of my favorites. I know it's one of your favorites. It's Options Boot Camp the premier options educational program. And of course, Mark Longo from the T-H-E, optionsinsider.com, as well as from the aforementioned network, upon which so many of you are binging these days. A couple things to remind you of at the top of the show. Hey, if you're just listening to Boot Camp, man, you are missing out on nearly a dozen other programs coming at you, usually one to two a day (laughs) out there, sometimes more if we get crazy. So wherever you're listening to this, make sure, you upgrade to the full network. Of course, if you want to go above and beyond, you want to get access to our great pro Q&A sessions. Just had another great one yesterday. Tackling, we tackled everything on that session. It was fantastic with our guest, Rich Excel. So if you want to participate in those, ask questions, pick the brains, some of the best minds in the world of options and derivatives. Of course, options oddities every Friday. We have that in there as well, talking about unusual activity. My co-host there, Mr. Rocklop, he's very excited. He's been messaging me about some of the trades we have on that are that are doing quite well. So he's he's excited. Should be a fun show there. Also, a lot of great unusual activity. You know where to go to check out all that. Theoptionsinsider.com slash pro. The place to go to learn more. Also gives you live access to this. You can heckle Dan live during the show. All sorts of other fun. Great giveaways. We're coming up. Man, it's hard to believe. We're already coming up on the end of November. This year is just flying by. So it's almost time to give away the November Pro Trading Crate. You want to get your name in that hat for that one. Trust me. Theoptionsinsider.com slash pro is the place to go as we go to see who's joining us on the old program today. First, let's go out to the beloved options mecca known as Frankfurt. We are joined once again by the black-hatted one himself, Mr. Dan Passarelli from Market Taker Mentoring. Mr. P, welcome back to the show, sir. Well, hello there, Mark. It is good to be back in the saddle again. And Mr. Dan, this is usually the portion of the show where I tell people, hey, if you like what you hear, 
Uh, make sure, throw a star, a like, a comment. Obviously, we've been doing this show for a long time. It has a great back catalog of reviews, but the algorithms tend to favor the new stuff, and we all know there's new people discovering the world of options all the time. We're going to take a little bit of a different tack today, though, Mr. Dan, because this one just brought a smile to my face when, when our producers showed this to me. This is not a five-star review in iTunes or any of the other usual places where people leave us reviews and comments for the show. This one actually came, I believe this is Twitter. And uh, this comes from a listener who goes by the handle Prophet Paladin. I do like the handle. And uh, he put a, a GIF, a meme image out there, which is effectively listeners of a pregnant woman. You know, new parents, they like to play music for the baby in the womb to try to develop them early. And so there's a pair of headphones on this woman's stomach. And the guy is playing music to it. And the image, what he's playing on the MP3 player that's connected to the headphones is, of course, our content there. And he, the caption says, shush, I told her it was Mozart. <laughs> and then he added, it's never too early to learn about ratio iron condor swaps. That just cracked me up to no end. Also a little bit alarming, Dan, that our voices are the first things this poor newborn baby is hearing. That's a level of commitment that is new for our listeners. sir. Well, I got to stop dropping F-bombs. Yeah, you got to stop working blue if the kids are listening, that's for sure. <laughs> out there. But yes, uh, that, that's a good one. You get a gold star there, Prophet Paladin, for new level of listener commitment. We salute you and all of you folks out there. Take the time to listen and, of course, rate and review. We love you all out there, even if you aren't forcing us upon your unborn child. <laughs> all right, and also joining us today, uh, holding down the Tasty Trade hot seat this week. Man, we've had a lot of fun people rotating through this seat of late. Let's see who we have today. Today's newcomer to the program and indeed to the network is Katie McGarrigal. She's one of the show hosts over there at Tasty Trade. Katie, welcome to the Options Boot Camp Program. Hello, hello. Thank you both so much for having me. Really excited to be here. And Katie, as we are wont to do with all of our first timers here on the network, why don't you go ahead and give our audience a bit of an overview of your background in the world of options and derivatives, as well as what it is you do day to day over there in Tastyland. Sure thing. So I actually started out at Tasty as an intern. Um, I was fresh out of school, coming from a broadcast journalism major at the University of Illinois. And, um, you know, while I was looking for a job, I was looking to kind of, you know, improve my resume. And um, I, I stumbled upon Tasty from my aunt's neighbor, who said they were looking for uh, people to intern. So that's how I made my way into the Tasty Live Network space. Um, I've been with Tasty since 2012. This has been my only, you know, big girl job, if you will. <laughs> and um, I started there as a production intern. I started to work my way up um, and learn a lot more about the space. I had no familiarity really at all with the derivative space or the financial space, really. You know, growing up, I was just taught you know, put your money in a savings account and hopefully it'll it'll grow a little bit over time. So the idea that you could make your money work a little bit harder for you um, was really a draw for me uh, as I started to work at Tasty and start to learn from all the great people that, um, you know, kind of host the shows day in and day out. I know you had your mall on. I know you had Liz on. They've been longtime coworkers of mine. Um, so I do a show on the network once a week um, with a few of my other co-hosts, Mike Butler and Nick Batista. It's one hour talking about options trading concepts. Um, we pitch trade ideas. We take questions from our YouTube chat. So I do that. I go on the road from time to time with the rest of the Tasty gang. Um, and then when I'm not on the shows, I am the marketing integration director so kind of taking everything we've learned at the network for the past 10, 11 years and hopefully kind of spreading the word to the masses in the same way that you all are doing with your great podcast. So Tom and company lured you to the dark side and you stayed for over a decade. So I guess you like it, Katie. Literally. I mean, what happened was the first time I was given a show, I went up to one of the two of them and said, you know, I don't understand this jargon. I don't understand what the heck an iron condor is. And you can see the light bulb go off in Tom's head. He's like, we're giving this girl a show. We're going to make her ask all of this on air and ask the questions that I think a lot of people out there have when they're when they're trying to learn the ropes of this whole thing. Well, speaking of learning those ropes, let's get started. It is time for a little bit of the old basic training. All right, boot in. 
it's time to get in line. What you're going to do is learn. You're going to learn how options work. Do you hear me? You're going to learn options trading inside and out, basic to complex. There will be no failures. Do you hear me? Pull in. Print bear to learn. All right, everybody, welcome to the basic training segment, the portion of the show where we tackle some basic options, concept, or strategy, or technique, and and explore how you can utilize it in your own trading and, indeed, your own portfolio. And, Katie, my producers tell me that you are an expert on all things futures options. Is that the case? Yeah, so after I learned how to trade with Tony Batista, just uh, plain old, you know, equity options, I kind of graduated into learning a little bit more with another one of my mentors, Pete Momat, and he taught me all about the futures space and subsequently the futures options trading space and how there is a lot of overlap, right, with putting the the power of probabilities into your trades. So excited to talk about futures options today. And I went back and checked when they said we're going to be talking about futures options today. I know it's a topic we've brushed on occasionally with listener questions here and there. But actually, Dan, it surprised me. Uh, You and I haven't had a full episode all about this topic for nearly a decade. In fact, it's been almost exactly nine years, Dan. It was episode 50, entitled appropriately enough, Futures Options versus Equity Options, which we uh, recorded way back in November 26 of 2014. So Katie was just learning about iron condors and all that fun back in that time. (laughs) <laughs> so, Dan, it's been a while. I think we're overdue for a little bit of futures options talk. What do you think? Oh, my goodness. It's been that long? Yeah, man. We got to do this. Let's do it. All right. Let's get started then. Let's start literally at the beginning. You know, for a lot of people uh, coming to options and to a show like this, Katie, they're new to all of this stuff like you were. Let's start with just some of the basics. When they're coming in, they're saying to themselves, man, what should I trade? Should I trade your traditional equity options, you know, so your your Apples and your Teslas and all that fun that they're familiar with? Or should they go the futures options route? Let, let's lay it down. How do you help people choose between the two? So the way I look at it is uh, it's kind of like Thanksgiving, right? There's room for everybody at the table. I think the most successful traders out there tend to be a little bit more product indifferent. Um, and they, and they, you know, they go where the action is or where the opportunities are. So, you know, sometimes maybe during an earnings season, I might heavy up more on some of those equity options plays. But if we're in times of lower volatility or um, maybe I don't have a typical, um, you know, type of job where I'm really, really busy during that typical market hours that, you know, um, eight to three central time. Um, so maybe like the futures options would be more attractive to me if I'm, you know, trading in different time zones or things of that nature. So um, I think there's room for both. I think there's power in both. Um, and I think that there's a lot of overlap in both in terms of having a high probability of success for your trades going in with a game plan and understanding when you would cover something, when is, when you would manage something, and also utilizing them as tools to, to diversify and just, um, you know, keep that number of occurrences consistent. Dan, you guys obviously onboard a lot of people over there at MTM as well who are maybe intrigued by the world of futures options. In fact, I know your cohort there, John, I know he handles a lot of the, the futures and futures options oriented uh, education over there. So when you folks are bringing people in and they ask you that question, should I go the traditional equity options or the more futures options route? How do you typically answer that? Man, I think that if you are going to be good at anything in life, you've got to be interested in it, you know? Um, and for some people, just trying to figure out the inner workings of corporations and balance sheets uh, or stock charts is, you know, is, is, is fun. They like paying attention to that kind of stuff. For some people, you know, looking at precious metals or the grains or the energy complex is just more interesting to them. So, you know, options kind of are options, uh, you know, wherever, whatever you're trading, whatever the underlying is, there are some nuances, but it's basically all the same. So I just say, hey, look, you know, chase your interests because that's that's what you're going to have more passion for. That's what you're going to want to study more and you're going to be more successful with it consequently. 
And Dan's right. At the end of the day, 10,000 foot level, it is all the same. If you buy a call, if you're familiar with how buying a call or a call vertical or all the different strategies we talk about here on the show, if you're familiar with those, they are going to be applicable across a broad spectrum of products. But that said, there are a lot of differences. There are a lot of nuances. At the end of the day, the devil is in the details with a lot of these products. And that is certainly in the case when you're considering whether to go the futures options or the equity options. So let's hit on some of those differences, some of the things you should be aware of before you take the plunge, listeners. Uh, the first one is pretty obvious. I just hit on it. You know, if you're talking equity options, you're pretty much talking about the universe of stocks. So you're going to talk about your Apples and your Teslas, also probably your broad indices, so your spies and your Qs and all that kind of fun. That's pretty much the universe you're dealing with there. So you're talking about a few things you have to grapple with. Usually it's going to be maybe an earnings announcement or things like that, dividend streams and other things like that, and planning with your trading. So there's a few basic drivers that you have to be familiar with if you're going to be trading those. Now, of course, when you're talking about futures options, now the door is open to all sorts of different underlyings that maybe you never considered before. Of course, you can go the equity route if you want. You can go the E-mini S&P 500, for example, a very popular product out there with a ton of options paper on it. So you can keep things in the equity realm if you want, but of course, you sky's the limit. Listen to our show every Thursday, listeners, if you're intrigued by this. This week in Futures Options, we go into the entire universe of trading on Futures Options every week over there at CME. So it could be ags, it could be metals, it could be FX, it could be crypto, it could be literally almost whatever your heart desires. Livestock. We had some questions yesterday in our pro Q&A session about livestock options, lean hogs and live cattle. These are things that used to be pretty esoteric trade by appointment products. Now they're actually doing some pretty decent paper. They're eclipsing products you know and love like silver on an almost weekly basis out there now. So the game is changing a little bit out there. Some of these products are a little bit more liquid, a little bit more interesting. So, Katie, when you're helping people understand the nuances, is that where you start? Do you start with the different underlyings? And then where do you go from there? Uh, yes, I definitely do start with that. And I think you hit on a couple of other really interesting points, right? Um, one thing that I've I've noticed over my years of, of trading both is that, you know, sometimes when you're trading um, in the future space, it actually enables people that are new or looking to kind of expand their exposure into asset classes that might have less tradable ETFs. So to your point, like talking about ads, right? Um, I think there's like CORN and SOYB, and they're not very, very liquid um, ETFs to trade. So luckily, though, you've got those major um, ag future uh, and futures options that might allow you to participate in something that might enable you to diversify a little bit more. So absolutely, the exposure, the pure market exposure, less of that one-on-one -on -one company that you get from a CEO, board, um, unrest, or a things announcement specifically is definitely part of it. And on top of that, some of the other that I kind of emphasize are how they expire, right? Like your equity actually expires to long or short 100 they're in the money. In the futures option space, that expires in one long or short futures contract. Um, so that's another big one that I try to hit on early on if I'm talking to people about graduating the futures options. Um, I know I'm sure we'll hit on it in a little bit, but just the uh, capital efficiency and that potential greater return on capital that you can have with the futures options because they are um, higher leveraged products. And then the other big thing that I kind of harp on is that unlike an equity option where your option or your at the money price is based on the current price of that underlying, you need to be mindful that in the future space, um, those contracts can have multiple prices. So you've got to keep an eye on that as you're setting up and managing or looking to like roll out your positions. Yeah, so a lot to unpack there. We can tackle that in, in many different orders <laughs> out there. I think the one you just hit on is probably another one we've seen for pain points for a lot of newer traders. Because you're right, there are multiple different prices they have to be aware of now. When you're looking at, let's go back to Apple. I keep saying Apple. Apple has one stock price. You know where it is. When you're trading options, no matter what month you're trading at, you're always looking at that one stock price. It makes your life a lot easier in terms of where is the underlying right now. But now, of course, if you're looking at futures options, the farther out you go, you're looking at different 
expirations for the underlying as well. Remember, the underlying now has a ticking clock alongside with it. The underlying also expires. And I find that is just a thing that a lot of new traders have a hard time really coming to grips with. And wait a minute. You know, if I have stock and it goes against me, Eknis put it in my portfolio and it's a it's a long term hold forever. Not the case with futures. The clock is ticking on those as well. So the notion that you have an underlying that expires, Katie, that seems to be a thing that really trips people up on top of the fact that you also now effectively have multiple underlyings. And if you want to trade front month options, it's one future. If you want to go three or six months out, it's a different future. So the, the fact that there's multiple underlyings with multiple prices and they all expire at different times, uh, do you find that to be a big stumbling block for newer futures options traders? I think that at first glance, it can be very daunting um, when you're just seeing so many different flashing numbers on your platform. But in the same vein, actually, if you kind of take a step back, the platform and the technology that is available to retail traders nowadays kind of simplifies it in a way um, where you're able to see on one single chain or one single interface, okay, here's the price that I'm looking at for this specific expiration. And I feel like the technology now does a really good job of kind of hopefully decluttering that noise and allowing you to really dial in and focus on, you know, the specific setup that you want to create. You know, that is a good point. Technology has improved back in the early days. It used to be very separate issues. You go to one part of the broker to trade futures options, sometimes an entirely different broker because they didn't handle it. Uh, These days, you're right. A lot of the brokers do a good job of making that seamless. It's all baked into one accounts page at the end of the day, even if they are being routed to different funds through different trades. So you're right that some of that technological hurdle has mitigated some of that. Dan, same question for you as you're over there at MTM tackling a lot of these questions from new mentees over there. What are you noticing are some of the biggest stumbling blocks for people maybe looking at the futures options world versus the equity options? Yeah. Um, I, the first thing I would have said is what we we're just talking about. Uh, just the fact that, um, you know, you do have these different underlyings. you have the futures term structure issue, uh, and which do you, you know, which do you hedge option positions with? Cause sometimes it's not the intuitive one. It's the more liquid one, what they call the top step on the trading floor. But, um, the, the other thing, um, to take into account is, everything kind of comes with the context uh, that you already have. And with equity options, it's pretty darn easy. Every call equals a hundred shares. So every penny is a dollar, every dollar is a hundred dollars. Pretty simple, but the contract sizing for futures is, is going to be different, you know, like grains, for example, every penny is $50, right? Because it's based on a 5,000 bushel train car. Um, So that can take a little bit of getting used to as well. Um, Just, you know, hey, I'm trading one contract. Whoa, how come I made or lost so much money? I didn't realize that. It's not $100 per tick. Well, no, it's not. Uh, That's another good point. The the actual contract specs are, are going to be very different and they're going to vary depending on what product you're trading. And as Dan mentioned, you go out, you trade your Apples, your Teslas, most of your traditional equity options. It's going to be that 100 multiplier that everyone is used to and have kind of come to just accept as normal now. You go out into the world of futures options and the game is afoot, depending on the product you're looking at out there. Could be heating oil, could be FX, it could be crypto, all different products, all different sizes. And that's going to take some getting used to. Also, as we mentioned earlier, and as Katie just mentioned, the capital efficiency of futures options is going to be a little bit different. The way they utilize margin, we'll get into that in a second, is also a little bit different. You know, you're used to probably your traditional equity margin. If you want to just go buy stock on margin, on loan, it's usually 50%. Getting into the world of futures, a different beast. And then, of course, the notion of just the settlement at the end of the day. A lot of these products may expire into the actual underlying. And that is a source of terror, I know, for a lot of traders out there. (laughs) They wake up in cold sweat that they're going to have a whole truck of barrels of heating oil, whatever the case may be, dumped on their front lawn if they don't pay attention to the exercise and settlement. Not quite that way, but I know that's a terrifying thing 
for a lot of people out there. So, Katie, let's work through some of those mechanical differences, the mechanical nuances we're seeing out there in futures options versus equity options, the margin, the settlement, and all of that fun stuff that no one likes to talk about. It isn't the sexiest thing, but it's very important when you're tackling these products for the first time, Katie. Absolutely. Um, I, I, I definitely, when I was first learning about um, futures options and how those expire and, you know, what happens at settlement, that was uh, a, a flashing red light for me as a newbie trader who doesn't have the space to store a thousand barrels of crude oil. Um, <laughs> but luckily for, you know, retail traders um, like myself, um, I think that it's a fraction of a percent actually ever go to like true um, for those products that are physically settled, I should say it's like a fraction of a percent or a very small percentage that actually go into physical delivery. I, you know, I have luckily never been in that position, but I'm pretty sure that my uh, brokerage firm would make it darn near impossible for me to actually take physical delivery on something unless I, you know, had the uh, the papers to kind of back it up, if you will. So um, it's kind of not something like I don't want to say trust me, don't worry about it, but kind of trust me, don't worry about it, if you will. Um, and then, like to your point, a lot of the futures products and the futures options now are also cash settled. So at the end of the day, um, it could just be, and most likely would be, if you were to not cover something, um, just a credit or a debit in your portfolio. Um, so that's kind of where I, that's my out or my viewpoint on, on settlement. Um, and then as far as the, the margin goes, yes, there is a different margin system for those futures options. So for example, um, say that you are doing like a thousand dollars spread with in something like crude oil. Um, and maybe you're collecting, you know, half of that. So your max profit would be $500. Your max loss would be $500. Um, and in the, the world of equity options, you know, typically um, your, you would be required to put up that $500 in your max loss uh, as you're setting up that trade. But with span margining, um, it kind of the calculation for how much capital you have to set aside is a little bit different, and it's based on a number of different parameters and factors that kind of calculate into this equation. So it could very well be um, that based on where volatility is in crude oil right now and based on that credit and how long you have in your um, spread trade, maybe instead of that $500, you're actually only required to put up. 300 or so dollars at the time of order entry. Now, that doesn't mean that that, um, you know, buying power requirement cannot change over time if your position is tested or if volatility expands. Um, but that is kind of where some of that potentially higher return on capital due to that span margining and that leverage could come into play. I know it's not the sexiest topic, listeners, but we have touched on various types of margin on this show in the past so go into the archives if you're one of our newer listeners and check out some of those it definitely behooves you to do that legwork and check out the different types of margin on the products you're looking at if you are intrigued by the world of futures options a little bit of a different game different rules of engagement there and if you're not prepared for that it, it may surprise you perhaps unwelcome surprise speaking of unwelcome surprises dan how many times have you woken up in the middle of the night and had yet another truckload of lean hogs dumped on your front lawn, sir. Happens to you all the time. <laughs> uh, the hogs, it's been a while. Um, but yeah, I, I guess I can cancel my storage unit in uh, Cushing, Oklahoma. I guess I'm not going to be getting oil uh, That would have been handy off. back in April of 2020. You could have charged a little bit for that. <laughs> yeah, that's right. Oh, goodness. You know, um, one other interesting thing about settlement, and this, you know, this one really hasn't worked its way back into the vernacular of any option traders, really. Uh, but it has to do with settlements and margin of um, futures options because they settle into a future, which is really just a, well, I mean, not to be like philosophical, but it's a concept <laughs> that you're trading, right? It's like a, a, a deal, uh, a, a handshake agreement you made with someone. Um, you know, there's no interest on that. Uh, but if you're trading calls or puts on, you know, Apple stock that's worth $190 a share, I mean, 
each round lot is, I mean, it's $19,000. Uh, and there is an interest rate component on that. Even if you've got the cash in your account, there's the opportunity cost. So interest makes its way into equity options as a result of that. But, you know, futures options, I mean, there's nothing to pay interest on, uh, except, I mean, the small amount of margin comparatively that you have to put up relative to the full price of a stock price. So, um, you know, that's something that I think even a lot of equity option traders are still like, mo most people haven't gotten bitten behind too much from that, you know, where you have some leaps on and they change interest rates and you're like, holy cow, how did I lose, you know, $2,000 last night? Oh, it's because interest rates changed. Um, but yeah, you don't really get that with futures options. We've hit on a lot. Don't want to overwhelm you here, listeners. A couple of other things, though, that come to mind, and I've seen people have trouble with when they're first dipping their toes in the futures options waters. First off, it's going to be, depending on the product, a very different skew environment than you may be used to. If you're coming from the world of equity options, so your Apples, your Teslas, your Spies, you're used to what is traditionally known as investment skew. So that means the puts are going to be trading at a higher level of implied volatility Relative to the calls. We've talked about that many times on this show. You can measure it with risk reversals and everything else. So if you're used to that setup, you're used to selling puts in a traditional equity and getting a nice premium for that and buying an out-of-the-money call and buying it at an implied volatility discount, that may not be the case depending on the product you're looking at in the world of futures options. For example, the precious metals. They traditionally exhibit a, a very different skew, maybe exactly the opposite. The calls are usually very heavily bid because that's where the interest, that's where the concern, that's where the fear usually is. It's to the upside. So the people are bidding up that call wing, and they don't really care about the puts. So the puts are actually cheaper. So that makes things interesting. Strategies that may be a little bit cost prohibitive in your traditional equity, like a collar, where you're buying the expensive put and selling the inexpensive call. Now, if you're doing that in, let's say, a metal or oftentimes an ag, soybeans can exhibit this quite a bit as well, a premium to the calls and a discount to the puts. Now a strategy like a collar, much more cost and capital effective for you because you're buying a cheap put, you're selling a very rich call. You can sometimes get those off for credits. So uh, they make certain strategies much more attractive depending on the skew situation. So before you go diving into any futures options product. Take a look at it. See how it trades. If you want some basic information on how these things line up from a SKU perspective, that's what our This Week in Futures Options reports are all about. It's all free. Head on over to cmegroup.com slash TWIFO, listeners, T-W-I-F-O. That's, of course, the name of our show that we do with them every Thursday. And that has those reports running 24-7, 365. So you can go check the SKU in fluid milk at 3 a.m. on a Saturday if you like. It's there for you. So if you're curious about how this skew is shaping up and maybe how it compares to what you're used to, then that's a good way to go about it. So the skew, uh, definitely one to consider. Another one is, of course, different trading hours. Uh, these things trade by different rules of engagement, not just your typical bell to bell like you see in the equity world. So something else to bear in mind. Uh, Katie, what are your thoughts on those two uh, differentiating factors that seem to trip people up? Differing skews and, of course, the differing trading hours. And then on top of that, any other things you want to let people know about when they're considering diving into futures options for the first time? Sure. So, yeah, I'll start with you. I, you hit on, you know, all of the major points there. Um, and I think, I think it was Liz who recently on your show was talking about her favorite setup, which is the Jade Lizard. Um, she may have so explained that to us on the show. Yes. <laughs> Yeah, so to recap what that is, um, for those that might be new, uh, basically it is a uh, short put option, and simultaneously you're also selling a call spread, and ideally you're collecting a credit that is larger than the width of that call spread so that you have no upside risk. So in the case of SKU, um, you know, strategies that I immediately start to think about um, both in the equity option space as well as in the futures option space, if you are talking about ads or some of the precious metals, maybe, you know, maybe it's a reverse jade lizard where you're doing the put spread and the naked call, or if a naked call is too rich for your blood, it tends to be a little too rich for my blood. Maybe you buy like a farther out of the money wing to cap some of that buying power and also define your risk. Um, so you've kind of got like 
you know, a reverse jade lizard or a dynamic width iron condor, if you will, to kind of capitalize on that skew. If you do have, um, you know, in the case of the, the gold uh, call skew or something like that, like a bearish assumption. Um, you could also think about something like a broken wing butterfly style trade. Um, so there's definitely strategies out there, I guess I would say, that will allow you to you know, fine tune your break even, your probability of success, all that good stuff in the same way that you would with equity options. Um, jumping over to the the hours thing, yes, that is definitely, um, it can be, you know, a blessing and a curse, I think, in the world of the futures trading space, because we still tend to see in the futures options the most liquidity during traditional U.S. trading hours. Um, you know, there's still the flexibility that you have of that 23-hour access. So if you do forget to cover your position or if you do see some type of overnight reaction to geopolitical news or maybe um, some type of, like, commodity inventory report, you have the ability to potentially manage that trade. But at the same time, if you do open up your uh, platform at two in the morning, you might see very, very wide marks between those bid and ask prices, which could, as a new person, give you a sense of panic if you start to see like a very, very rich, you know, positive number in your P&L for the day or, um, you know, a possibly red number in, in your P&L for the day. So just be thoughtful and keep an eye on that liquidity uh, due to that 23 hour access for sure. Dan, any other final takeaways you want to leave with our listeners there in terms of when they're considering making the jump perhaps to futures options, or maybe they're starting off and they're trying to choose where to begin equity options or futures options. What do you want them to think about? Yeah. You know, I'll tell you what, look, here's the best place to start. Go to um, find out what exchange they're traded on and, you know, JFGI. And then go to that exchange's website and look up the contract specs. Like, that's going to be your best friend. And, you know, the first time you read those, you know, like the words they use are different than the words you're used to seeing. So it could be, you know, it could seem a little weird for you. But that's where all the information is. You know, like what what are the actual, you know, talk about after hours and such. You know, what are the actual hours that this thing trades, you know, like things like, I mean, geez, the meats, what do they trade like three hours at two and a half hours a day or something crazy like that? You know, like you, you need to know when those are and just all those little nuances. I mean, the, there's probably a good handful that I'm not thinking of right now too. So. All right. We hit you with a lot here today, listeners. So we'll leave it pretty much there. No mail call. For this week, let you folks process just a quick overview again of everything we kind of just hit on. If you're coming to the world of futures options versus equity options for the first time, of course, uh, the different multiplier is going to be an obvious differentiator to start off with. So, as Dan mentioned, head on over to the exchange you're looking at and get very familiar with the contract specs. Other specs in there you have to pay attention to is it physical? Is it cash settled? Luckily for you, a lot of these products, exchanges aren't idiots. They know for a lot of retail, they don't want that proverbial truckload of lean hogs coming to their house and being dumped on their lawn at 3 a.m. So they've made a lot of these products cash settled, and they have made it very difficult, as Katie laid out, to, to get that physical settlement. So if that's a, a fear for you, you don't have to worry as much about that anymore. Different trading hours, of course. The SKU is going to be a big one, so become very conversant in the SKU of your product and, of course, the margin as well, as we just mentioned, uh, futures options. Very different rules of engagement. Uh, but this was a fun one. Katie, I'm glad you could join us here, getting Dan and I to talk about a topic we haven't discussed in almost exactly nine years to the day. Uh, so that was fun, Katie. And if folks are intrigued, they want to go check out what you and the rest of the Tasty crew are talking about all the time, where should they go? What should they do? Sure. So they can head over to Tasty Live, T-A-S-T-Y-L-I-V-E dot com. Um, my show is on at 11 Central, Monday to Friday. Um, I'm typically on on Thursdays with the guys, but uh, it's a good time anytime. We'll take your questions live in YouTube as well, so you can find us on the Tasty Live YouTube channel. And if you want to give me a follow on Twitter, um, I'm very proud to say that I just uh, surmounted 10,000 followers. So give me a follow at Trader Katie. 
There you go. Give her a follow. Hit her up with all of your very deep, esoteric futures options margin questions. I'm sure she will love to tackle them all for you. Over Lay them up. <laughs> <laughs> and, Mr. Dan, if folks have questions about futures options, just about anything else in the world of options, where should they go? What should they do, sir? Oh, we're easy to find. Uh, markettaker.com, two T's in a row. And, uh, yeah, we've got, uh, we've, we've got some answers, and we're glad to share them. Check them out over there, markettaker.com. Don't forget the second T for Theta over there, listeners. And that is going to do it for us on the network today, a rear light duty day for me today, which is nice. Give my voice a bit of a break. Of course, we're back again with our usual double dose of content coming at you tomorrow. We'll start off uh, with the option block with the Flowmaster and our friends over there at SIBO. Right after that for a show very relevant to this one, This Week in Futures Options with our friends over there at CME. We're going to get into all this fun, so if you're intrigued by the world of futures options, you want to see what's trading day after day, week after week, what the skew is, the volatility, all that. We get into all that stuff and a whole bunch more, so you should definitely be listening to This Week in Futures Options if today's topic resonated with you back again on friday of course noon central 1 p.m eastern for volatility views after that exclusively for our pro folks we come back one final time for the week for options oddities get into all sorts of trouble and analyze a whole bunch of fun unusual activity of course if you want to join the pro the options insider.com slash pro the place to go then we're back again next week with the option block and the crypto rundown all the way through to next wednesday another episode of options boot camp stay safe out there everybody Options Bootcamp is brought to you by Tasty Trade. Ready to shred your paper trades? Then trade at Tasty Trade, the broker that gives you what you need to make your own way. Get smarter every day with options education and research tools. Analyze your risks clearly with a potential profit and loss graph. Chart your way with hundreds of indicators. Make the numbers make sense and find the opportunities only you can see. Trade it with fewer clicks on an easy-to-use platform. Mobile, desktop, web. Supported by a trade desk with decades of combined experience. Stocks, options, futures, and more. You choose, you trade. Get what you need to make smart moves. Go to tastytrade.com slash pod to see for yourself, genius. Tasty Trade Incorporated is a registered broker-dealer and member of FINRA, NFA, and SIPC. You're listening to the Options Insider Radio Network, the home of the Options Podcast. For more quality options programs, visit theoptionsinsider.com or search for Options Insider Radio Network in your podcast provider of choice. Listeners can also access all of our programming through our mobile app available on the iTunes and Google Play stores. Select programs are also available via live stream at Mixler.com slash options dash insider. That's M-I-X-L-R dot com slash options dash insider. Don't forget to follow along with your favorite programs and submit your own questions for the hosts at Twitter.com slash options, StockTwits.com slash options, Facebook.com slash the options insider, or via questions at the options insider.com. <laughs>